Hey guys, I'm Kyle from The Distilled Man, and up next, we're gonna be talking about table manners and how to avoid embarrassing yourself when you dine out with other people. When you hear the words manners or etiquette, I know sometimes you might just think of, you know, rules that you blindly have to follow just for the heck of it. But actually, that's not the case. At their core, manners are just about being considerate and respectful to the people around you. Table manners are particularly important because, well, let's face it, there's a lot more ways to gross someone out when you're eating with them. You know, when you're you know, slurping and chomping and burping and splattering versus when you're just like sitting next to them on a train reading a newspaper. Because of that, table manners have always been a good tell about someone's overall refinement, their upbringing, and their sort of sensitivity and kind of self-awareness around other people. So my thought is, even if you don't practice impeccable table manners at home, it is important to know how to behave properly for those important occasions. Today we're gonna to be talking about some easy to follow guidelines that will help keep your table manners on point throughout an entire meal. Sitting down at the table. So when you're just about to sit down at the table, that's a great time for you to silence your phone and put it away. You don't wanna be that guy whose phone is going off during a nice dinner. The other thing you wanna do is make sure and wait for everyone to gather around the table and to about, about to be seated before you sit down yourself. And you may wanna take a cue from the host or hostess. The first thing you do when you sit down is generally put your napkin on your lap. And in really formal settings, you would actually wait for an indication from the host or hostess to do this, but in most settings, you're probably safest just to put your napkin on your lap when you first sit down so you don't forget. Of course, it should never go in your shirt. You know, you should keep it in your lap, but your napkin is your friend, so feel free to use it throughout the meal to blot your mouth and keep it clean. Body language. When you're sitting down, your posture should be upright. You should try to avoid you know, slouching or leaning way back in your chair. Keeping your elbows off the table. So this is kind of a misunderstood rule. Of course, it, it isn't acceptable to put your you know, elbows on the table while you're eating. And in general, you wanna kind of keep your free hand on your lap um, while you're eating. But it is actually acceptable to put your elbows on the table in between courses when you're not eating. And particularly after the meal, if you're just um, enjoying conversation with the other diners, you can put your elbows on the table, lean in, um, and it's totally fine. The place setting. Oh, the place setting. Nothing gives people greater anxiety than the place setting. You sit down and there's all these glasses and plates and implements. You don't know what's going on. It's totally overwhelming. Now the first thing you want to figure out is where's my bread plate and where's my water glass? Because you, you, know, you don't want to be like sipping off someone else's glass or stealing someone else's bread. So I like to use this trick that my friend Dave showed me that's really handy. Just remember B and D. So B for bread and D for drink. And that always kind of tells you what side everything is on. When it comes to understanding which glass is for what, honestly, you shouldn't have to worry about it because most likely when you get there to the table, your water glass is probably already going to be filled or it will be pretty obvious which one the glass is. And if you do have multiple wine glasses, generally that means you're probably going to be in a place that has servers or a sommelier. Um, and then the server or sommelier is going to be the one who's going to fill up your glass anyway. So you, you don't need to really think about it. When it comes to silverware, there's something you got to understand. First of all, if the person who laid it out actually knows what they're doing, then each utensil should relate to the order that the dishes are being presented in. You know, anything that's served on a flat plate should be eaten with the fork and anything that's served in a bowl should be eaten with the spoon. The only thing you really need to remember is that you start with the utensils closest to you and work from your outside in. Those utensils on the top uh, above your plate are for dessert. Don't worry about them for now. On your left side, you're probably gonna have some forks. On your right side, you're probably gonna have some knives, a spoon or two, and then maybe a funny miniature fork looking thing that's a seafood fork essentially. Starting the meal. So as much as you might wanna just tear into your food because you're hungry when it first arrives in front of you, you've got to wait until everyone else is served. And in really formal dinners, you would actually wait to get a cue from the host or hostess, but usually you're safe if everyone is served. In the Western world, there are sort of two acceptable ways to hold your fork and knife. There's the American style and the continental style. With the American style, you hold your fork in your dominant hand, kind of like a pencil. And then when it comes time to cut something, you switch hands. And that's why this is sometimes called the zigzag style also and you use your dominant hand to cut with the knife. Cut a single bite of food and then switch the fork back to your dominant hand to take a bite. And while you're doing that, if you want to 
uh, set the knife down, you can place it at the top of your plate with the blade facing down towards you. With the continental style, you keep your fork in your non-dominant hand and then you still cut with your dominant hand, but you don't switch them. According to Emily Post, either way is fine. This is actually what I do because it's a little bit easier. You're not switching back and forth. And of course, when you're eating with your fork and not cutting, you should be keeping your other hand in your lap. And remember, don't reach across the table. If something is close enough to you that you can grab it and you're not reaching over another diner, you can feel free to reach out and get it. But otherwise, you're gonna have to ask the, um, someone else to pass it to you. Can you please pass the salt? And on that note, if someone asks you to pass the salt, you always give them the pepper as well and vice versa. Finger foods. Yes, believe it or not, it is okay actually to eat certain foods with your fingers, even at a formal dinner. And, you know, obvious finger foods like corn on the cob, uh, you know, chicken wings or uh, ribs or uh, pizza or tacos, you can eat with your fingers, but you have to use your judgment. If it does look like it's gonna be really messy, maybe try to use a fork if you can. Chewing and talking. You probably already know that you're not supposed to talk with your mouth full of food. And of course you wanna avoid making loud smacking noises or chewing with your mouth open so you bother other diners. And the easiest thing to do is really just to take smaller manageable bites, especially knowing that you're probably gonna be in conversation throughout the meal. Now, if you need to get something out of your mouth while you're eating, you can use your fingers um, as long as you're discreet. Just try to cover your mouth with your hand or a napkin so other diners don't see, and then just quickly put it on the edge of your plate. Taking a drink. So while it's not completely a no-no to take a drink with food in your mouth, it's best to probably make not make it obvious. Also, you may wanna wipe your mouth if you've been eating before you take a drink off your glass, otherwise your glass can look like a crime scene. Eating foods you don't like. Okay, so what if you're at someone's house for dinner and they serve something you don't like? Well, the polite thing to do is actually to, to serve yourself one or two bites and just try it um, and just hope that they're not too insistent about you uh, loading up with seconds. Excusing yourself from the table. If you need to get up and go to the bathroom during the meal or you know go away from the table for any other reason, you don't need to ask for permission and you certainly don't need to tell everybody why you're going. Man, I've been drinking espresso all day and I need to pee like a racehorse. You know, all you really need to do is just say, excuse me, I'll be right back. When you leave the table, fold up your napkin and place it to the left of your plate. And it's best to, you don't need to completely fold it into its original swan shape or whatever, but it's best to kind of fold it over so that you can kind of conceal any unsightly food stains. Being part of the group. Again, dinner is meant to be social, so make sure that you participate in the dinner conversation. And also take note if you find that you're you know, eating much faster or much slower than the rest of the group. Checking your phone at the table. Hopefully this goes without saying, but checking your phone at the table is, or using it, is just very, very disrespectful to the other diners. So if you, for some reason you do get an urgent text or call that you have to attend to right then, then you've gotta quietly excuse yourself from the table and take care of that without bothering the other diners. Ending the meal. Throughout the meal, if you're just sort of pausing or taking a break from eating, you can put your fork and knife like this to show that you're not finished yet. And most servers uh, will sort of universally recognize that. If you are actually finished with your food, what you do is you place your fork and your knife at an angle, um, sort of like a, a 10 and four, with the handles facing at four and the tips facing at 10, if you think of a clock face. And then what you'll do is you'll place your napkin to the left of your plate, um, or if it's been cleared already, you could just place your napkin where your plate was. Not everyone is gonna be offended if you don't follow these guidelines, but the way I see it is that once you learn basic table manners, you see that they're so easy to keep up that just why not do them? Especially when you know a lot of diners will appreciate that, that you're being conscientious enough to have good table manners. All right, guys, hope you found that helpful. If you have any questions about dining etiquette, or if you have some tips you wanna share of your own, Leave a note in the comments below. I always love hearing from you guys. And uh, thanks again for watching, and I'll see you soon.